I want to actually uh, lift you up a little bit, and I want to offer actually some solutions, and that's what I'd like to most of this talk to be about. What can we do about this? What can we personally, individually do about this? So let me suggest three solutions. First, we need to become better trustors, better trust decision makers. Why? Because we need to actually withhold trust from people that are untrustworthy, from companies that are untrustworthy. Otherwise, we need to shrink the market for the untrustworthy. And if we're naive trusters, we won't do that. We actually create an incentive to, to, to be duped. Right? So we need to get smarter about making trust decisions. Second thing we need to do is we need to develop more trustworthy leaders. And I think we can actually do that. I think we're actually doing that at Fordham. I see a lot of students here. Uh, I think we're actually doing that. Yes, uh, on um, Monday I was up at the undergraduate campus. Some really good work being done by some folks in terms of developing trustworthy leaders. The last solution is we need leaders to change their systems. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, we, uh, we make trust decisions all the time. Uh, let me go back there a second. So we have a presidential race that's happening, right? Uh, we have candidates. You're going to make a trust decision about those candidates, right? On what basis are you going to make that decision? What would be your criteria? By the way, it's interesting when you talk to political marketers and brand people, campaigns are really about convincing the people that the other candidate is untrustworthy. That's largely what political marketing is about. Uh, it's about trust. So the question is, what basis will you use to make a decision to trust? Now, we have about 50, 60 years of science around trust. Morton Deutsch, who I studied with at Columbia, founded the whole psychology of trust. We know, and there's been 50, 60 years of research on why do people trust or why do people decide not to trust and be suspicious. And what I want to do is I want to offer, and that's essentially what this book is about, is about what is that decision process, and then how can we use the, the markers of trustworthiness to build trust. So what are those markers of trustworthiness? First is similarities. We tend to trust people who we think are similar to us. It's the tribal portion of trust. And have similar values. So all high trust organizations create a community of people who have common values. Google, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Ernst & Young, SAS, uh, Zappos, they all they create these incredibly uh, intense bonds uh, around values. The second aspect of trustworthiness is the alignment of interests. We tend not to trust people who we think their, their interests are not aligned with ours. By the way, that's smart, right? If, if someone's interests are in conflict with yours, are they going to serve your interests? Probably not. This is why great leaders integrate people's interests. They don't just deal with one stakeholder. They integrate lots of stakeholders together. They don't just serve the shareholder, they serve all stakeholders. Next dimension is benevolent concern. We trust people who we think care about us. By show of hands, how many of you know people that are so nice and so benevolent that they would lose sleep at night if they betrayed somebody's interests? Right? You trust them. Now, next question. How many of you know people that would betray their grandmother if they could get an advantage and not lose a minute's sleep? We know those people too, right? And we don't trust them, benevolent, right? It's kind of crazy, the, the variance in human behavior, right? Another variable is capability. We trust people who we think are capable, who are competent. We don't trust people who we don't think are capable or competent. By the way, that's just good management, right? Predictability and integrity. We can't trust someone if we can't predict what they're going to do. So to be trustworthy, you have to have integrity, you have to be somewhat predictable. And I'll talk a little bit about, about how you do that. And then last, trust is about communication. If we have good communication, we may have trust. If we have bad communication, it's unlikely we're going to have trust. But trust is about relationships. And no good relationship exists without good communication. So hopefully, you can take these six principles of trustworthiness and figure out how to manifest them in, in yourself as leaders to make a difference. We can also use them to make better trust decisions. But you know what? That's not going to be enough to solve the problem. And here's why. Us human beings, we're wired to adapt to the situations we're thrown into. We could take 100 high trust students here at Fordham, graduate students, undergraduate students, and if we put them in a low trust environment where people are doing untrustworthy things, what's going to happen? 
They're going to adapt. They're going to start to be less trustworthy. Culture trumps personality. So the solution to the problem of low trust has to involve high trust leaders re-engineering their environments. And I want to talk just briefly about how you do that. 